Gentlemen, welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of Los Angeles City Council's Planning and Land Use uh, Committee. My name is Mark Luis Harris Dawson. I chair this committee. I'm joined by our Vice Chair, Mr. Bob Blumenfeld of the San Fernando Valley, and our current Price Council member representing the new 9th uh, District in South Los Angeles. Uh, we'll begin this meeting as we do uh, all of our meetings with uh, folks who signed up for general public comment. I'll call your name and uh, you will have uh, one or a maximum of two uh, minutes to speak. I'll let you know uh, as you come up. I'll begin with Isaac Hong, Sarah Lee, Hannah Yi. When you hear your name, you ought to come up right away. Are we going to move? Cassandra Maraz, Myra Jimenez, Jasmine Garcia. Brenda Villanueva, Raul Verdugo. Good afternoon. My name is Isaac Kong, Plum Committee. Um, I am currently living in Koreatown. I'm here to voice my concern regarding the overconcentration of alcohol outlets in my neighborhood. In the city of Los Angeles, 80% of census tracts have total number of alcohol outlets that exceed ABC's guidelines. Um, this issue already seems out of our hands, and we need a community-friendly policy, like I call restricted use sub-district motion. Council file number 17-0117. ARS is a flexible tool, for instance, if the community does not want any more liquor, liquor, liquor stores within certain street, they can choose to put an RS on those blocks where businesses requesting type 20 and type 21 will be denied. Not, not all alcohol license will be denied. It is up to the community to decide which type of alcohol licenses applications they want to disallow in their designated community. Today, I'm here to ask Plum Committee to agendize this effective tool for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Lee, and I'm also, I am a One member. One more time. My name is Sarah Lee, and I am a member. Sarah Lee? Yes. Yes, okay. And I am a member of the Los Angeles Drug and Alcohol Policy Alliance and also a resident of Koreatown. I am also here to express my concerns over the undue concentration of alcohol businesses in my community. The city of Los Angeles currently has over 6,000 on and off sale licenses combined. Multiple studies show that there is a correlation between alcohol outlet saturation and crime rate. In addition, 44% of the census tracts that have alcohol outlets that exceed ABC standards also have above average crime rates. <coughs> RS Council File 17-0117 would, would not only be a flexible tool to, manage, to help manage the density of alcohol outlets in our neighborhoods, but also, would also give communities a voice in how they want RS in our neighborhoods. Thank you. I, oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, council members. My name is Hannah Yee, and I am part of the Coalition for Prevention and Awareness in LA Metro, also known as COPOM, and I'm also a resident in Koreatown. I'm here today to talk about council file number 17-0117. Um, as a resident of LA, I truly believe looking into the legalities of this ordinance would be beneficial for the health, safety, and economy of the current community. I talk to the many different alcohol businesses in the community, and right now, competition is very strong because more alcohol businesses keep popping up. Agendizing this motion would strengthen the current alcohol businesses in the community while also protecting the lives of community members against alcohol-related harms. Please think about how this would be benefit different constituents in your district and agendize this motion before it expires. Thank you so much Thank for you. your time. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Cassandra Moraz, and I am a member of the Los Angeles Drug and Alcohol Policy Alliance. Uh, we are here once again, and possibly for the last time, prior to the expiration of Council File 17-00117. Uh, we are here to express our frustrations with Plum on not listening to the community to agenda as a tool that will help mitigate the alcohol industry in the city of Los Angeles. This tool benefits each and every individual in the city if the committee would have just given it a chance. So why has it taken the committee almost a full three years to give the community answers that it's been begging for? Thank 
Thank you. Hello, Plum. My name is Jasmine Garcia, and I am a member of the Los Angeles Drug and Alcohol Policy Alliance, Ali Dapa. I am here to demand an answer from all of you that claim to care for the communities you represent. By not taking any action on council file number 17-0117 RS, you are showing you don't care. Why? Why have we not received a response from any council member on this committee? Why has it taken almost three years to make any progress on RS? This motion is only asking for a report on the feasibility of RS. The communities you represent would benefit from a tool such as RS that would prevent new alcohol retailers from coming into neighborhoods that are already flooded with liquor stores. We do not need any more alcohol in our communities. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Brenda Villanueva and I am the co-chair of the Los Angeles Drug and Alcohol Policy Alliance. We are here because we are disappointed that public health and safety is not being taken into account as we see our community saturated with alcohol licenses. Just as much as businesses have the right to thrive, residents throughout Los Angeles have a right to a better quality of life. It is unfortunate that city file 17-0117, known as the Eris motion, is not being granted the opportunity to be that tool the city could use to mitigate the impacts from alcohol proliferation in our communities. This motion has been sitting in plumb for three years and is set to expire this week. It would be flexible enough to meet the needs of each specific district. We can understand why the Plum Committee has an agenda as a potential solution. We ask that ours be agendized to open up a real discussion of mitigating alcohol densities in the neighborhoods of Los Angeles. My name is Myra Jimenez and I'm here with Alcohol Justice speaking on uh, Council File 17-0117-RS to express our concern for moving forward with a report back. All we're looking for is a report back. We've done a lot of work to meet with all the Plum Committee members' offices to try and have this conversation about how we're not trying to implement an ordinance at this time. All we're looking for is this report back that everyone seems to understand is just trying to assess this nexus between the city and state, which we know is a challenge. We know South LA has implemented something in the past, but we haven't really assessed to look at how can we look at something that would be adaptable for other parts of the district. And we want to make sure that we acknowledge that this is an issue for other communities of all the communities of color and people that are low income and aren't here because they're at school, they're with their children, but they're living this day to day. So we just want to have an opportunity to be able to have this report so each district can assess what does alcohol density look like in their community? How do we improve it? And how do we use the city and partner with community. Thank you. My name is Raul Verdugo with the Los Angeles Drug and Alcohol Policy Alliance. We cannot understand why some members of this committee have refused to engage in a constructive dialogue with us regarding the RS motion. We expected more from this committee and its appointed leadership. We are so sorely disappointed that this motion 17-0117 would never be afforded its due democratic process. Thank you, uh, Janice Tidwell, Laurel Pally, Sylvia Tidwell, Elisa Pastor. Yeah, so if I call your name, come on up. Yes. I'm Janice Tidwell. I'm speaking for Louise Van Voorst and Marianne Van Voorst Ryan, great granddaughters of the original owner of the C.B. Voorst factory, now the Santa Fe Art Colony. A hundred years ago, our great grandfather decided he didn't just want to build a furniture factory on South Santa Fe, he wanted to build a factory with integrity. He chose a young architect just starting out, John Montgomery Cooper who went on to design dozens of notable commercial buildings around LA. Many decades later, our family's historic factory was reconceived as the Santa Fe Art Colony. Our father, Richard G. Van Voorst, was enthusiastic and very, very proud. Today, let's honor Los Angeles' past, celebrate the architecture, architect and architecture, and honor LA artists of the present and future. We urge you to support the historic cultural monument status of the Santa Fe Art Colony. Thank you. Thank you.
name so, is? So, I'm sorry. I've called up people who are speaking on items two, three, four, and five. It sounds like some people are speaking on item number nine. Right. This is, we, we didn't know to check the box for number nine. That was, she's presented uh, the colony and so am I. All right. So, so can you all do me a favor if you want to speak on number nine and you didn't do it correctly, can you go back and sign up for number nine? Thank you. And just pass right now? Okay. If I've called you? Pass. Huh? I'll pass right now. Thank you. Because I have you down for number five. All right. I'm going to call the rest of the names. If you really want to speak on nine, you'll forego this opportunity and you'll come back to it later. Gia Galarza, Eleanor Whitledge, Zach, Zach Strasters, Omar Galindo, Jose Pena. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Omar Galindo, and I'm here representing uh, UA Plumbers Local 78, 250, and Sprinkler Fitter 709, as well as IBW 11, Smart Sheet Metal 105, Iron Workers 416, and 433. As a lifelong Angelino, I was raised in LA by a single mother. After high school, I didn't have college as an option, so I joined the Marine Corps. Coming back from the Marine Corps after a tour in Iraq, I didn't have too many options as far as Trans transferring my uh, experience in the Marine Corps as a combat engineer looking for mines and IEDs to a job in the civilian world. I didn't want to be a cop. I didn't want to be law enforcement. Luckily, through the unions and through projects like this, I was able to provide for my family and get a good job. As a representative of the hardworking men and women in the construction industry, we are very excited about this project. It will ensure good paying jobs and will use responsible contractors. For all the community benefits this project offers, we hope you will approve it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Mejia, if we could read uh, oh boy, this. items number two, three, uh, four, and five, uh, summaries into the record, as there's uh, a recommendation from the chair that we accept those items on consent. Uh, yes, Councilman. Item two is a report from the Cultural Heritage Commission relative to the inclusion of the Bryson Apartments as a historic cultural monument. Item three, Councilman, this is a trans, uh, report from the City Planning Commission. It includes a zone change ordinance for a mixed-use development consisting of 180 residential apartments. 11% will be for very low-income uh, individuals. Item four is a transmittal from the City Planning Commission. It includes a zone and height district change. It's for a self-storage facility. And item five, uh, transmittal from the City Planning Commission. It, it includes the, the GPA resolution and a zone change for a mixed-use project that would include 129 live-work condominiums and 113-room hotel. Excellent. Thank you. So on, the, on those items, uh, Members will accept those on consent unless there is an objection. Uh, hearing none, that'll be the order. Uh, all right, Mr. Mejia, we have items number seven. Yes, Councilman, item seven, I believe there's a request for a 60-day continuance. It's a cultural heritage report relative to the inclusion of the Bothwell Ranch located in CD3 as a historic cultural monument. Uh, so there's a request to continue item number seven for 60 days until March 24th, 2020. That's correct, Council. Uh, without objection. On item number 11, there's a request to continue until February 11th, 2020. Yes, Councilman, and uh, that's for a mixed-use project, um, and that w that's a request for the continuance for February 11th. Excellent, without objection. And then there's a request to continue item number 12 till February 25th, 2020. Yes, Councilman. Item 12 is a proposed ordinance relative, relative to temporary signs. This is a citywide ordinance, Councilman. Excellent. And we'll continue item number one until next week, Tuesday. Yes. Very good, Council. Excellent. Without objection, that'll be the order. That takes us to item number 10. Um, item 10, Councilman. This is a, a CEQA appeal filed by James Childs from the North University Park Community Association relative to the adequacy of the categorical exemption for a conditional use for the sale of beer and wine. Um. 
We have a report from Department of City Planning on this matter. Mr. Chu. Yes, uh, good afternoon. My name is Henry Chu. Item number 10 is uh, an appeal for an environmental clearance. The case is ZA 2016-1630-CUB1A, which was heard by the South LA Area Planning Commission in May of 2019. Um, the case uh, was an appeal for the zoning administrator's determination and environmental clearance. Um, and the South LA APC sustained the decision of the zoning administrator and determined the project was categorically exempt. Real quickly, uh, the project was, was issued a class five category 34 categorical exemption, which um, is appropriate for this project because the project is an existing restaurant requesting a condi conditional use for on-site um, alcohol consumption. The uh, class five category 34 is for the granting of a conditional use for the on-site consumption of alcoholic beverages pursuant to LAMC section 1224W1 and 1224X2. Beverages will be dispensed and consumed um, do not exceed an occupant load of 200 persons and provided that the premises will not also require an original dance hall, skating rink, or bowling alley permit from the Los Angeles pa Planning Commission. And this project fits that uh, categorical exemption and staff is available for any questions. Thank you so much. If you can hang there, uh, Mr. Chu, move just a little bit to the left so we can see the clock. We have a number of uh, public comment speakers on this uh, item. Uh, but the first we'll hear from our appellant, Ron Cargo. No? Appellant representative? The appellant is Jim Childs, which is I. Is this Jim Childs? It's in. Okay. okay. They have you with a fancy lawyer down here, Mr. Childs, so I don't well, know. Well, I wish. <laughs> Uh, finding f James Childs, uh, North University Park. Finding five offers this controversial, convoluted, convoluted support of the project. After listing nine sites where alcohol use was observed within a 1,000 foot radius of the subject property, quote, the zoning administrator recognizes that the number of off site locations exceeds the number al allocated for the census tract. Over concentration can be undue when the addition of a license will negatively impact a community. Over concentration is not undue when the approval of a license will benefit the public welfare and convenience. There is no sustainable position based on the facts to find that the public welfare benefits by the sale of beer at a hamburger stand. The ZA in finding number one offers supportive language for the project's purported beneficial qualities. He finds, quote, the project offers a viable dining option in the area. The restaurant offers sliders, chicken wings, and strips, allows the patrons to purchase beer and wine to complement their meal. It contributes to the vibrancy of the area. A convenience to beer and wine is expected by residents living in urban areas. And most importantly, residents of the mixed-use project expect such amenities without the inconvenience of driving someplace else. The USC residents will not suffer the inconvenience of driving someplace else because they can walk three blocks south to the new USC village that offers a myriad of restaurants and drinking establishments, or two blocks north to the University Park Victorian village, a smaller but noteworthy selection of restaurants. The children, teenagers, and young adults that utilize the Hoover Recreational Park the elderly residents of the Ward Via residence, the preschoolers and nuns of the Sister of the Company of Mary, the single homeless veterans with children of the Casa de Rosas, and the worshipers and students at the Art of Living Foundation will not benefit from this project. Uh, Ms. Jackie DuPont Walker is going to speak uh, with my remaining time to this issue. Jackie. Uh, thank you, Jim, and good afternoon. Um, I rep Jacqueline DuPont Walker, representing Ward Economic Development Corporation. Uh, we joined with Mr. Charles in this appeal uh, because we not only believe it is not the correct solution for quality of life now, but there is a history. Uh, you may remember some 20, 30 years ago when then Senator Nate Holden 
that are battled in South LA because of the proliferation of liquor licenses. And then some 25 years ago, some activists saw the same thing was happening. And one of the prolific um, leaders in that was Community Coalition. We are still concerned about the quality of life in our community. Mr. Charles has mentioned the 120 elders who are next door. The persons who live in this facility above the space that we're discussing are in large part, could be minors between ages 18 and 20. It is important to know that they do have other options. Across the street uh, in Council District 1 is Hoover Park. Uh, we try to attract children, we try to attract mothers with children, and we try to attract seniors there. It is not the place to have that. Immediately across from that, and CD8 also, we have the space for day child care and daycare. But most important to Ward EDC at this time is Casa de Rosa and Council District 9 that's under construction, where formerly homeless single parent veterans with children will be moving. This is not anti-alcohol. This is pro-quality of life. This is not the location for people with sensitive needs to have this option. We, and let me say, we have been very clear customers of the establishments are there. So it is not anti-small business. This is quality of life. We all need to be there. We all need to ensure that it's the best possible solution for that corner. And this is not it. Thank you, Commissioner. I've been a resident in that neighborhood for 40 years and was heavily involved when the Casa de Rosas was a women's shelter. This is one of the most important neighborhood corners in the city of Los Angeles in terms of its servicing to the community. The student housing that was constructed in there is part of uh, a, a usage that is not compatible to begin with. And to offer liquor within the same building in which the students live is inappropriate. It certainly doesn't qualify as a categorical exemption. And I ask you to support my appeal and deny that categorical exemption and have the applicants do a higher level of environmental review. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll hear from our applicant for five minutes. I have a... Hi, good afternoon for the record. Elia Thompson at Urban Cohen and Jessup representing the applicant and owner. So I want to be very clear about a couple things. Number one, this is not an off-site liquor license. It's been painted as such, but it's not. It's not what these um, constituents in Koreatown and others were talking about in terms of uh, a type 20 or a type 21. This is an existing restaurant for a beer and wine license that is only on-site service for a sit-down restaurant. It's not the same thing. It is a type 41 approval for beer and wine only on-site restaurant. Over the last four years, we have agreed to numerous conditions above and beyond what most similar situated applicants uh, have, have agreed to um, because we've worked with the council office, with the community, to the best of our ability to get this right. We have, we have uh, reduced the scale by 70, 80 percent of the site of the restaurant, taken out all of the extras, no longer a liquor license, just beer and wine, limited the hours even more than what the city originally gave us. Um, and we appreciate the concerns. That's why we've been working so hard. That's why we've been working for three and a half years and agreed to all these conditions. Um, but again, this is a beer and wine license for a ground floor retail restaurant. Um, it's only allowed to serve until 10 p.m., only on site. No one is taking liquor in liquor bottles and going to a park or, or any of that. And, and again, to be very clear, it's been vetted numerous times in community meetings. We had our hearing before the ZA. We went before the South Valley Area Planning Commission. Each time we've gotten approved, each time we've had additional conditions uh, in an attempt to try to find a way um, to, to, to reach a consensus. Uh, and just recently, we even, in one last attempt to try to find a place where we could all land, uh, agreed uh, to, to put forth a couple of additional conditions, which we've let the council office know, and we appreciate your help in, 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 in this process. And uh, I, again, at, at this point, we're on you know, nearly a four-year journey. Uh, and uh, again, under CEQA, this is an infill project. It's, a, it's an ex existing restaurant. Beer and wine only will we'll adhere to all the conditions that are both in 
um, the various approvals, as well as the two additional ones in terms of our timing and everything else that we've submitted to the council office. And I'm here with the owner who's been a stakeholder in this community for over 16 years, and he wanted to say a couple things. Thank you. Hi, my name is Paris. Um, we've also, uh, we've tried really hard, as Ellie mentioned, for the last three, three and a half years, um, actually four, to compromise, to make this a, to involve the community, to ask for opinions to what we should do. Um, at the latest one, we also accepted a one-year um, probation period. And the way I view that is, just give me a chance. Let us, let us survive there. Let us, give us a chance. Um, uh, we're up for review. In a, in a year, again, in front of the Area Planning Commission. Um, and we, we would like to just keep this restaurant afloat. That's, that's my only real ask, and keep, all, keep the jobs, keep, uh, keep a vibrant, uh, keep that Hoover Adams Corner is really vibrant, and this is a really important part of the restaurant being able to survive. So that's all I ask for. Give us a chance. One last comment I want to make, since this is solely about CEQA, is um, this approval does not contribute to any kind of over-concentration, real or alleged, because again, this is not an off-site alcohol sales, um, and there is specifically an exception to this exact type of approval when it is beer and wine, when it is, involves a, an actual restaurant. And um, as the, the, the lady before me uh, spoke about the patron, uh, the, the elders who live next door, many of them are patrons of this restaurant. We give a senior citizen discount and we give an emergency responder discount. And um, many of them come on a regular basis. So again, we appreciate your time and we're here to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, who's the current, uh, I just question is uh, for the operator. Who's the, who's the current operator of the restaurant? It is, uh, it's, it is being renamed to the International House of Hummus, um, which is another indicator that the first um, operator, uh, it was very difficult to survive. So, so this international, I love hummus, so, <laughs> and this is in my district. And so the International House of Hummus is not there now. It's not there now, but they're, okay. they're, they're, they, have a lease. they have a lease. We have a signed lease. So the, so the lessee that is responsible for what happened, for adhering to all the things you guys are agreed to, this person is unknown to the community. I, I'm responsible at the end of the day. Well, but I'm saying the person, like, are you going to, people running the restaurant. Say that again, the question. Yeah, I'm yeah. just, I, I think you, you've answered it. It was a burger place, now it's a hummus place. The hummus yeah. place is relatively new. Yes. Is that right? Got it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. All right, uh, so we got a number of public comment speakers on uh, this. Um, please stay tuned, our a staff member from uh, Department of City Planning, uh, as we'll come back to you on a lot of these questions. Uh, Carlos Briseño, Aurora Becerra. And Ms. Jean Frost. Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Carlos Presino, and I'm a resident. I'm a homeowner also in the community, and right there on Hoover and 23rd. I've been living in that neighborhood since 1958. I have seen bars come and go. I have seen the community come and go. Right now, we have probably 80% students, and not everybody that used to live there are gone. And we have in one block, we have four bars, more than four restaurants to serve liquor. I see the effect at 2 o'clock in the morning when the place shuts down. I'm the one that has to get up and yell at people to leave and stop blocking my driveway. I call transportation every weekend, either have a car sighted or have a car towed away because people forget where they park their car. That's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you. Hi. My name is Aurora Becerra, and I've been in this community since 1962 on 23rd Street. I am the co-founder of UPAC, which is University Park Action Coalition. I am opposing this liquor license, and these are my reasons why. We have Rancho's Market, 23rd and Hoover, 2nd, Bocaro's, 24th and Union, eBay, 24th and Union, La Flor, 24th and Union, Mar uh, uh, Pancho's Market uh, 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 24th. Uh, and then we have a, a six or seven other more liquor licenses in our community. Element is Stuho, is the Student Housing uh, Incorporated. And about a year and a half ago, I and the city attorney, we had to go 
We put, the city attorney and I and the police department had to shut down two of their properties, which is on 23rd Street because we had party houses there. Thank you. I'm representing the Empowerment Congress North Area Neighborhood Development Council, so I would request the Neighborhood Council time limit, if possible. It did, did the Neighborhood Council submit a community impact statement? Yes, and I gave it to uh, our clerk, and I also brought one of our comment letters so that everything is above board. All right, can you confirm Ms. Cro Ms. Frost's claim? Excellent. Three minutes for Ms. Thank Frost. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Location, location, location. That is a very important element here. Uh, a class five, uh, 34, item 34 ex exception, exemption uh, has an exception. And that is, if it is in a sensitive location, you cannot use that exemption. Um, where it's per perhaps normally insignificant in a particularly sensitive environment uh, you cannot use the class uh, 34 e exemption. So what we have here is we have traffic issues, parking issues. We have the shelter at Casa de Rosas. We have the uh, convent. We have uh, Hoover Park Recreation Center. Um, it is not, the location is just not appropriate. Uh, this area was uh, the parcel that was obtained by eminent domain oh, 40 years ago when Ms. DuPont Walker and I were both on the project area committee. And then subsequent to this, it became a student housing development. And I have uh, submitted their ad about uh, selling this housing. There is no necessity economically to have sales of beer and alcohol on this site in order to have a productive development there. Um, it simply is not appropriate. And the Empowerment Congress North Area Neighborhood Development Council looks at liquor requests, uh, beer and wine, or alcohol, regular alcohol, whether it's off-site or on-site, very, very carefully. And over the years, this particular one, because of the location, we have found it's just in an environmentally sensitive area and ought not to be approved. You can walk down to University Village which is a couple of blocks, or up to Victorian Village, which is a couple of blocks. And you can satisfy the need to have a glass of wine with your meal. Uh, there is no necessity for this. And this category of, of exemption ought not to apply. I urge you to sustain this appeal so that a proper environmental review can be embarked upon. The corner of Adams and Hoover is special. It also has um, a lot of traffic. And there's only 14 parking places here for the public on this site. So uh, for all of the reasons above, and for those mentioned in the Nandex statement, I ask you to sustain the appeal. Thank you. Thank you so much. And may I submit these items? Yes, please. Sorry, have, I, uh, have I called your name? You called me first. Thank you. Tell me your name. Oh, because they had you down as the yeah, appellant. I'm, I'm, uh, Come on up for one minute. I'm speaking in support of Ward Villas uh, and Ward EDC, but I was not the uh, uh, the representative. Got, well, you're on now. Let's let's. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I'm definitely speaking in support of the CEQA appeal. We believe that this uh, should uh, have a mitigated neg negative declaration uh, and be studied. Uh, we feel that the, uh, the categorical exemption has overlooked the fact that this uh, proposed uh, conditional use would result in a substantial adverse change to the neighborhood. We believe that the associate zoning administrator has erred in not significant, uh, su sufficiently uh, considering the impact to the sensitive receptors in the community. And those have been already enumerate, uh, enumerated by uh, Ms. Uh, DuPont Walker and, uh, and Jean. Um, I wanted to also clarify that uh, the applicants stated that, oh, well. Uh, thank Next you. time, thank you. That's all right, thank you. <laughs> Elliot Thompson, Paraz Batka. 
Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, and Kobe Bryant signed up, which is not funny. All right. Um, that concludes our uh, public comment speakers. Uh, for this item, uh, I have a, qu a couple questions for staff. Uh, there was some um, difference of opinion on whether or not the exemption for um, on-site sales ex exemption to over-concentration exists for this. Um, whether or not the uh, exemption for over-concentration uh, applies to this project or not. Uh, could you speak to that to the best of your ability? Uh, MEG, um, I wanted to clarify first that what's before the pub committee is an environmental clearance. Um, a lot of the issues raised were based on the findings made for the conditional use. And uh, this was all vetted with the South LA Area Planning Co Commission who um, ended up sustaining the zoning administrator's determination. The findings are here in their, in their determination. determination. The findings of over-concentration are part of that conditional use finding and not part of the CEQA clearance. Um, the CEQA clearance before you is in accordance with CEQA guidelines and as we look through the type of project and identify the appropriate clearance, it's clear that the class five category 34 is appropriate since it involves on-site consumption of alcohol. Um, so in regards to a lot of the points that are made, they're raising um, points related to the findings for the conditional use, which is not before you. So one more time, uh, there's a dispute about whether or not the exemption should be uh, applied to this case. Uh, it's, it's, I will just tell you, it seems counterintuitive that you would have on-site alcohol sales at a, what is a, ostensibly a student housing facility next to a senior housing facility across the street from a um, homeless shelter for single parents. Uh, does, is the re, which reading of that exemption uh, is it your understanding is correct? I, there isn't an exem exep exception that applies in this case um, in regards to sensitive uses. We have to look at what the sensitive uses are or, or around the site and determine and make the appropriate uh, conditions for, for the conditional use. Got it. Thank you. Uh, also, uh, so you heard the discussion that we uh, had with the applicant. Uh, about the operator, so there's there's a CEQA application, and um, there's a planning application. Is the Hummus House or the Hummus Restaurant in the application, the planning application, or the CEQA application, or any of it? This, this is Henry Chu. So what was before us was the specific operating characteristics of the Burger Rim, and we we applied conditions as part of the grant. One of the things that we considered was the potential for a future operator and uh, to, to um, acknowledge that the zoning administrator imposed two conditions. Condition number eight, which requires any change of ownership that the operator be provided, that the new operator be provided these conditions of the conditional use. And then there's also condition number 33 in the determination, which I'll read. Uh, as follows, any future operator or owner for this site must file a new plan approval application to allow the city of Los Angeles to review the mode and character of the usage. So in other words, if there's a new operation coming into the site, they'll have, the new operator will have to file a plan approval. They'll have to go through that process all over again, go through the public hearing, go through the, proper, the appropriate notification of the radius around the site and um, uh, allow for the public to comment and um, allow them to also submit correspondence and go through that process again. So essentially you're saying a new operator would have to start from the beginning. Right, and here in the determination we call it the plan approval application. And we have a new operator in front of us. So Is that your understanding? Yes. Okay, so, it, so it, it seems like it wouldn't make sense for us to go forward with that if that's gonna be the situation. Yes, if there is a new operator, according to this CA condition, 
they will have to file for a plan approval and go through that entire process. Okay. Uh, any other discussion, uh, members? New operator, as of when? new operator as of when? The current operator is considered new or considered current? If there's a new operator, <laughs> then, then yes, if there's a new operator from what we, from the floor plan that we reviewed, then they'll have to go ahead and file a plan approval. All right, uh, thank you. So uh, uh, given the, the murkiness on uh, this item and the um, overwhelming community um, concern about the project, notwithstanding the oper owner and operator's good faith effort to negotiate over a long period of time, I'm gonna move that uh, we continue this item. Okay. We'll continue this item for 30 days um, and come back to it. And allow time to figure out this new operator business and further uh, further opportunity for the owner operator to work with uh, work with the neighbor council, the community, and their neighbors. Uh, there's no objection. That'll be the order. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chu. Thank you, everybody who uh, came to participate with us on this item. That moves us to item number six. <coughs> Item six, Councilman, um, what's before you is a zone change and a height district change and a general plan amendment. This is for a 298 restricted affordable unit project um, and along with the environmental clearance, which was a skier. All right, we have a report from Department of City Planning. Good afternoon, my name is May Cernowitz, ground project planner for the case that's before you today. Uh, the project um, that's before you is for the construction of 302 residential dwelling units and 10,230 square feet of commercial floor area um, proposed by the Weingart Center Association. Of the 302 proposed dwelling units, 298 will be uh, set aside as restricted affordable units for extremely low, very low, and low income housing households. Uh, at its meeting on December 12, 2019, the City Planning Commission heard this case and approved the site plan review um, and recommended adoption of the general plan amendment from light manufacturing to regional commercial and a zone change and height district change from M2-2D to TQC2-4D. Uh, the general, the site plan review was not appealed and what is before you today is consideration of the general plan amendment and the zone and height district change. I'm available for any questions if you have any. Uh, thank you. If there are no uh, questions, we'll hear from the applicant rep. Good afternoon. Kevin Murray on behalf of the Weingart Center Association. We uh, urge you to support uh, uh, this project going forward. We did submit a letter regarding one of the Q conditions. Uh, uh, it, it's such that the commission uh, recommended a Q commission a Q condition regarding uh, bathrooms and showers, which was adamantly and vehemently opposed by the community members in the downtown neighborhood council, uh, and we would ask that the uh, that this committee uh, remove that condition and move the project forward. All right, thank you, Senator. You should watch your back. You got somebody right behind you. <laughs> are you going to use some of the time? You guys are good. All right. All right. Uh, so we have uh, public comment, but before that, I'll ask if there's a representative of Council District 14 to offer, to offer testimony on this item. Uh, good afternoon, Council Members. Thank you for the opportunity to speak uh, in support of the project. Uh, the Council Member um, is uh, very supportive of the project, and uh, we're also supportive of the applicant's request to amend the conditions as requested in their uh, letter that was uh, submitted to the file last week. Thank you so much. All right, we have uh, Ashley Kim, Patty Berman, Michael Shillstone. Hello, my name is Ashley Kim. I'm a resident of the Arts District, which is only a few blocks away from the project, and I'm here to uh, voice my um, support for this really important project to give um, an opportunity for those that need a second chance in life to reestablish themselves and have housing and a roof over their head and to be able to give them a great opportunity to be employed and become, uh, you know, have a life with dignity and purpose. 
So I not only I support this, I would urge you know you to support this project to be expedited as much as possible because we need more affordable housing in our community and uh, we need to be able to meet the need that we have at this point. So thank you so much. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name's Patty Berman. I'm president of the Downtown Neighborhood Council and we do have a letter on file with this particular issue. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that we are in wholehearted support of this as you can tell from our letter if you have it there with you. The other thing is that we were very, very s certain about the way we wanted the ground floor. We want this project to be a part of a community. We want it to be able to have life on the sidewalk. There, we want people to be able to feel that this building is part of their community. This does not happen if you put uses on the bottom that do not interact with the sidewalk. To ask to have showers and bathrooms inside each one of the offices is blatantly saying, we would like to turn them into units eventually. Somebody will close their curtains and that's the end of our sidewalks. So please, do not do this. Take it the way it was originally done. Let them have their offices downstairs and let us have a vibrant sidewalk. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Michael Shulstone with the Central City Association. We represent over 400 businesses and nonprofits in LA, and we're committed to creating a vibrant future for downtown, which includes advancing projects and policies that provide comprehensive solutions to homelessness. We're here to voice our strong support for the Weingart Center's 600 South San Pedro Street development. This project will bring hundreds of desperately needed permanent supportive housing units to Angelinos currently experiencing homelessness while providing services that support residents' long-term well-being. Weingart Center is an important partner in the coalition to end homelessness, and we encourage your support for this essential project. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'll let, give uh, Wayne from Encino for two minutes. You've signed up on 12 items, so you'll speak for two of them. It's right, Wayne from Encino, the original ghetto white nigger, yes. So we're going to support affordable housing. We want showers on the first floor, open to the public, along with public bathrooms. So all of us, including Mr. Weezer, after he gets indicted and gets out on Stay parole, on the topic. he on the topic. can take a shower Stay and take topic. and bathe himself and him and his lovely wife and four homeless children. And that's what we need, for. We need services for the public for these greedy, rich, white, nigger developer juju bears that are all over the city. So that's why we want street level, public bathrooms and public showers. And Mr. Bonin agrees with me, and Mr. Blumenpeel, Blake, AKA Blah Bleeben Blail agrees, and even Karen Price especially agrees. He's another one. He's going to be coming off a of parole in a few years. Stay and on he the topic. too is going to Stay need a topic. shower. But you see, I'm on topic, fool. And you know, now, when you cut me off, you know that I call 213-473-7008 and give an update. Warning. Now, that's why I try to talk. You keep on damn developing. Cut me off. And that's why... All these developers and all these projects are a bunch of greasy, filthy, dirty thieves, and they all belong in federal prison. The staff also belongs in federal prison. Current You're off price topic, belongs Mr. in Spindler. federal prison, and the police department belongs in federal prison. The only one is God looking over our head. Kobe, come down here. Kobe Bryant and save us from these demons. Thank you so much. All right, I'll ask uh, members if there's any discussion. Seeing none, if there's any discussion from staff, anything that you want to respond to, uh, thank you. All right, uh, uh, Mr. Mejia, members, uh, I'll move that we find that the project was assessed in the Sustainable, sustainable Communities Environmental Assessment, number ENV 20176156615SCEA, dated September 2018, and the errata dated October 22nd, 
2019 was adopted by the City Council on October 26, 2018, and approved the general plan amendment to the central community plan to redesignate the land use from light manufacturing to regional commercial and the zone and height district change from M22D to TQC2-4D with the modified conditions as requested by the applicant. Seconded by Mr. Blumenfeld. Uh, Councilman, uh, as to the environmental clearance, uh, we need to note that the project was uh, assessed under the Sustainable Communities Environmental Assessment uh, dated September 2018, the errata and all of that. So yeah, I, I read the errata dated October 22, 2019. Okay, and, and uh, in the, the additional clause, Councilman, per city attorney, to denote that, that it's also pursuant to CEQA guidelines 15162, 15164, as supported by the addendum dated November 2019, and that no major revisions are required to the SCIA and no subsequent SCIA environmental impact report or negative DEC is required for approval of the project. Excellent. We'll make such an addition. Thank you. Council. All right. Without objection, that'll be the order. That takes us uh, to items number eight and nine, if we could read both of those into the record. Yes, Councilman. Yeah. Item eight is a report from the Cultural Heritage Commission relative to a, a recommendation to decline the inclusion of the Weinberg residence as a historic cultural monument located in CD5. And eight and nine, could you read uh, both of yes, them? Yes, Councilman, item nine, a report from the Cultural Heritage Commission relative to the inclusion of the CB Van Voorst Company Manufacturing Plant, Santa Fe Art Co Colony as a historic cultural monument located in CD4. Excellent. Good yes, afternoon. Yes, Mr. Princeton, you got two. Okay, I'll start with item eight. Uh, item eight is uh, 100 to 112 North Delfern Drive, the Weinberg residence. This is a two-story single-family residence in the Bel Air, Holmby Hills neighborhood, uh, built in 1938 and designed by the master architect Paul Revere Williams in the early American colonial revival style. Uh, this nomination was considered by the Cultural Heritage Commission. The commission voted three to two to recommend denial of the nomination. It is coming back to you because it was initiated by the city council. The commission found it did not meet any of the three criteria of the Cultural Heritage Ordinance because it had lost integrity of its materials, design, and workmanship. Following the initiation by the city council and before it could be considered by the commission, the property was significantly uh, demolished and altered. Original characteristic features and historic fabric were damaged beyond repair. So based on the compromised integrity of the structure, the commission uh, voted that it did not appear to be eligible for designation as a historic cultural monument. Thank you so much. Uh, if you can hang tight. Uh, we have a number of speakers on this, but I'll begin uh, with asking a representative from Council District 14 to speak on item number nine, and a representative from Council District 5 to speak on item number eight. record is not mixed up. Just take the comments for eight first, finish that, and then take an action, and then take the comments for nine next and finish All that. right, CD5, item eight. Thank you, Council Member Zin Khan Malik, Senior Planning Deputy with Council District 5. Uh, regarding uh, item number eight, uh, we are certainly uh, disappointed uh, at the turn of events and uh, certainly did not want to be standing here looking at a uh, declination. Um, at this point, uh, because of the uh, status of the property and the facade, uh, we are resigned to accept and move forward with the declination of this nomination at this time. Uh, however, we do uh, look forward to working with our colleagues on the council to uh, close uh, what we see as many loopholes in the demolition process for historic properties. Uh, we believe we've already started with a motion to extend the notification timeline um, for properties over 45 years old from 30 days to 60 days and continue to look into uh, a variety of other legislation that we can present. So although we are uh, disappointed, uh, we're uh, a little bit resigned to move forward with this at this time. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, I'm going to call the 
uh, four speakers on item number eight, uh, and then we'll come to Council District 14. My apologies. Um, we have Daniel Friedman, Carrie Chastine, Philip Rahman Zada, Zadaya. My apologies, Brian Curran. Good afternoon, council members. Uh, my name is Daniel Friedman uh, on behalf of uh, the property owner with Jeffrey Mangles, Butler, and Mitchell. Um, really, I just want to say we're here to answer qu any questions. Um, I'm representing property owner Philip as well as Carrie, so um, you can put those cards on hold um, should you have any questions. Uh, we agree with the um, staff recommendation, the recommendation from the Cultural Heritage Commission, and I do want to just say um, it wasn't demolition work. Uh, that is an issue that um, we discussed at the Cultural Heritage Commission. It was hazmat abatement work, which is permitted by the AQMD. Um, the timing of this whole scenario uh, was the issue, which, as the council office addressed, is something that the city is looking into fixing. So we understand that. So you can put um, uh, Ms. Chastine and Mr. Rah Rahim. Oh, well, they get, this is their one shot, so. We're on hold. If, you can put them at the end if you have any questions. Thank you. All right, uh, anybody who want, who's been called who wants to speak? Brian Curran, Hollywood Heritage. The case of the Weinberg residence at 100 Delfrin Drive is a real tragedy. This notable work by African-American architect Paul Williams was willfully vandalized and de facto demolished by Philip Rahim Zadeh using the abatement loophole while demolition was on hold and the site was under consideration of the history for the historic cultural monument status. Mr. Hames that has certainly knew better as he has successfully restored historic buildings downtown. The Cultural Heritage Commission was then un unable to, to act due to the advice of the city attorney who claimed the commission had to evaluate 100 Delfern Drive in its vandalized straight state rather than how it stood at the time of the, at the start of the nomination process. This has introduced a, a new standard which never existed and provides a perverse incentive for property owners to vandalize their properties and remove character defining features in order to preclude HCM designation. The lesson was learned a month later on January 6th, in which, in which case Weissman Residential, the property owner of 7054 and 7058 Hawthorne Avenue, proceeded with abatement work, heavily vandalizing and partially demolishing an conclude. identified historic resource in Thank Hollywood. Thank you. All right, Mr. Uh, Spindler, you'll need to sit down or excuse yourself from the room or be excused from the room. That's your final warning. Thank you. That's your final warning. Uh, any uh, additional comments, uh, Mr. Bernstein, on item number eight? Uh, no, not. Really. All right. Uh, so it sounds like we need to vote on that uh, and move to the next item. So um, uh, I'll, I, I'll move that we concur with the Cultural Heritage Commission and disapprove the inclusion of uh, the Weinberg residence located at 100 through 112 North Delfern Drive, 111 North Baroda Drive and 10141 West Sunset Boulevard in the list of historic cultural mon monuments. Second. Seconded by Mr. Price. If there's no objection, that'll be the order. That moves us to item number nine. Uh, and we'll ask, uh, we'll begin with a representative from Council District 14. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Joella Hopkins, uh, Council District 14. I'm the downtown director in strategic media. Um, it's my pleasure to be here today to um, go over and support the recommendation by the historical to include and recommend that was approved and recommended. Um, as you might know, the Santa Fe Artist Colony is one of the city's first publicly subsidized artist housing. It was developed in in a response to the increased desire to have li live workspaces for artists in the 70s and 80s. Like the Arts District, um, they were using underutilized spaces uh, for residents, and which has now become a very desired location for new development. And for us, we really support the Tenants Association in keeping the af affordable housing for the artists. And part of doing this is by including this property to preserve the efforts and create it as a historical, uh, to, to preserve its historic nature of structure, uh, excuse me. I'm a little nervous today. 
um, to preserve the great. historic nature of the structure. Um, we respectfully uh, request on behalf of the office and the council member uh, to approve the site um, and the inclusion of the historic cultural monuments list as recommended and approved by the Cultural Heritage Commission. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, <laughs> council District 14. So uh, folks will note that uh, Council District 14 is uh, supportive of this status. Uh, that goes a long way. I'll just leave that at that. There are 21 speakers on the queue. You have each a minute to speak if you so desire. You're also welcome to pass if you feel like what you have to say has been said. So here we go. Eric Stein, Adrian Scott Fine, Avera, Duke Choi, Janice Tidwell. Let's do it. Thank you, council persons. Great shirt. Um, I, my name is Eric Stein, and I was in the 90s one of the directors of the Los Angeles Macintosh Group. Many of the members from the Santa Fe Artist Colony, colony were members of the Macintosh Group. One of them, uh, Lila Lowry, created this picture of me back when I weighed an additional 100 pounds. And this was one of the first images that I ever saw on the internet in the 90s. Back in the days when images would, oh, I'm sorry. Back in the days when images would load slowly like somebody pulling open blinds. Uh, these artists are enshrined in the internet and they carry the dreams of our community. And I know that you want to preserve the homestead of these artists their legacy and your own legacy. Thank you. Good afternoon, Adrian Scott Fine. On behalf of the Los Angeles Conservancy, we are the applicant for this nomination and we encourage your strong support for this. It's a significant historic place within the Los Angeles community and telling the story of the artists and live work residents uh, that were developed here. So thank you for your support. Hi, my name is Duke Choi. Uh, the CRA, uh, at one point, uh, downtown was deserted, and uh, this artist colony was created to re revitalize the community, and it succeeded after 30 years, after the lease ended. Um, but uh, clearly, we would like to have the, the property to be a historical nomination um, because we need to be saved, and as artists need to sustain their work practice. Um, the developer, uh, if not, then they would probably take out some of the warehouses or whatever and create luxury homes, which is not even needed in, the, in that industrial area. Um, and that's all I could say. I wish I could say more. Thank you. Hi, my name is Avera Vreeland, and I'm also known as artist DOT Love is Religion. And I'm speaking on behalf of the Santa Fe Art Colony um, I'm looking in this building and um, in City Hall, and City Hall was built in 1926. Our building was originally built in 1916, and then the interior in 1924, along with uh, when we started using the train and the engine to bring in all those um, during the World War II. Anyways, so I'm nervous too. But anyways, in 1953, the warehouse building was built, which made the whole entire building complete for historical nomination. Um, I wanted to thank you all for being here and listening to us. I know you have to hear a lot of things from a lot of people. And uh, I want you to know I'm proud of LA City and for this nomination for the Santa Fe Art Colony. Thank you. Thank you. I am again, uh, Janice Tidwell. I'm speaking for Louise Van Vorst and Marianne Van Vorst Ryan, who were the great granddaughters of the original owner of the C.B. Van Vorst factory, now the Santa Fe Art Colony. A hundred years ago, our great grandfather decided he didn't just want to build a furniture factory on South Santa Fe, he wanted to build a factory with integrity. He chose a young architect just starting out, John Montgomery Cooper, who went on to design dozens of notable commercial buildings around LA. Many decades later, our family's historic factory was reconceived as the Santa Fe Art Colony, 
and our father, Richard G. Van Voorst, was enthusiastic and very proud. Today, let's honor Los Angeles' past, celebrate the architect and architecture, and honor LA artists of the present and future. We urge you to support. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, council members. My name is Eleanor Whitledge. I'm an Angelino and an art lover. Uh, Los Angeles is rich in history for its contribution to the greatest art in the 20th century, whether the medium is film, painting, sculpture, photography, etc. We Angelinos should be so proud of this role in the world history of important art and proudly take our place beside cities like Florence and Paris or any other place with a legitimately rich history in art or literature and seek to preserve the elements that foster its creation. Santa Fe Art Colony is just one of those very elements. Los Angeles broke through in the 1980s as the hotbed for contemporary art and we continue to be an important, if not the leading, location for the creation of significant and groundbreaking visual art today. Let's show the world that this distinction is important to us by preserving the very basic components desperately needed to continue this tradition, an affordable place to live and work for these artists. Thank you. Thank you. Laurel Paley. <laughs> Sylvia Tidwell. <coughs> Maud Winch. Anne Winchester. Patty Berman. Mary Bamba. Bill Lazaro. Rochelle Fab. Hello, my name is Laurel Paley. I'm the chair of the Visual and Media Arts Department at Los Angeles City College, an artist and a resident of the Santa Fe Art Colony. And I am speaking the words of Jan Williamson, who's the director of the 18th Street Arts Complex. Respected council members, she and I both are in full support of the LA Conservancy's nomination of the Santa Fe Complex for local historic cultural recognition. Since 1988, and I moved in then, hundreds of renowned and emerging artists have added new historic significance to this already historic site. Artists who define the character of Los Angeles as contribution to contemporary art around the world. It's taken over 50 years of hard-won collective effort for LA to reach our current global cultural significance. The Santa Fe Art Colony is a central contributor to this. We should preserve this unique complex of purpose-driven studio spaces for artists. To lose this historic site to hidden investors with no civic pride or commitment to LA's cultural ecology would be a tragedy. That's Thank your you. time. Thank you. Council members, my name is Sylvia Tidwell and I am the president of the Santa Fe Art Colony Tenants Association. I support the nomination and its recognition of the importance of early artist, live work, adaptive, reuse efforts in Los Angeles. The Santa Fe Art Colony artists and other downtown artists converted empty industrial spaces, creating in Los Angeles the bare bones, utilitarian artist lofts of the late 20th century. As such, the interiors, are historically significant, embodying the distinguishing characteristics of an architectural type specimen. These loft designs are simple and bare bones, and real artists need no more than that. However, the purity of these interiors is endangered. Even though the artist in residence zoning restricts rental to visual artists only, the owner has rented to non artists Thank and allowed you. them. That, that's your time. I'm so sorry. My name is Ann Winchester. Back in the 80s, I was in charge of affordable housing for a bank in San Francisco. And a group of artists came to me who were renting a live work space in Emeryville. And the owner was going to sell it. And I was able to get my bank to make the first live work loan in the Bay Area. And here I am, 30 some years later a lot older, a little wiser, and still fighting for affordable live work space for artists. And all our cities, particularly Los Angeles, 
retains its vitality and its excitement by retaining its artists. They are essential for everybody. Thank you. And I am Maud Winchester. I sit on the Gregory Ain Marvista tract HPOZ. And as a, someone sitting on an HPOZ board, I see uh, when you preserve the interior, the exterior, the landscaping, the amount of filming that happens in a neighborhood, bringing jobs to community members is essential. And I really see this happening um, with Santa Fe. And I urge you to preserve the entire interior, exterior, and all the buildings. And thank you so much. Hello again, Patty Berman. I will say that the Neighborhood Council still has this in the pipeline, so I'm speaking on my own on this particular issue until such time as we have a chance to vote. But it does seem kind of a no-brainer that we preserve the historical buildings that we have, not allow them to be gutted and turned into high-end units, but to keep the artists in residence. We need it so badly. North of there, they've already managed to destroy quite a bit of our artists in residence. Can't we keep something? Can't we allow people to buy a building without destroying it just once in a while? Let's keep what we have. Thank you. My name is Mary Bamba. I'm a resident of the city of Los Angeles. I live in Council District 5. I want to speak in support of including the entire property um, for historic cultural status, including the warehouse building, which is historic by virtue of its design and materials. They don't build well warehouses like that anymore. And the interior spaces, which are historic by virtue of who lived in them and worked in them and the fact that they're part of this amazingly innovative project of artists' workspaces supported by the city of Los Angeles. Thank you. I'm Bill Lassero. I'm an artist and have published art scene and visual art source in town for a number of years. I was one of the uh, original team that worked with Councilman Joel Wax to develop the specific terms of the regulations that went into the artist in residence and resulted in the live work ordinance. The Santa Fe colony was one of the earliest to adopt and conform to those regulations and they've proved over the period of that time, over 30 years, the efficacy and sustainability of the terms of that ordinance. It's the presence of the artists that's actually the most essential element that qualifies the colony for historical cultural status. And it's your memorializing of that status that the continued presence of those artists will be guaranteed. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, committee. My name is Rochelle Fab. I am an artist. I have uh, lived here since 1998. I've been gentrified out of three neighborhoods, including workspaces, and I urge you to please vote yes on the historic cultural monument. I work in downtown LA. I know the artists and the tenants association are fighting so hard to keep affordable living artists, living, working artists in our neighborhood in downtown LA. So I urge you to please vote yes on all of the buildings, interiors, exteriors, and the warehouse. Um, this is what we need to keep the health of our city and to keep us on the map as a destination for world-class art. Thank you. Thank you. Carol Cetron, Joella Hopkins, Francesco Siqueiros, Don Lewis, and Steve Luffman. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Carol Citroni. I'm going to continue where Sylvia Tidwell left off. She was talking about the uh, owner renting to non-artists currently and allowing them to build me mezzanines and other interior constructions, which is endangering the purity of the interiors. Uh, they're building these to support commercial businesses rather than fine art practices. We are urging the committee to protect the bare bones interiors and to support the nomination uh, as approved by the CHC. Uh, I am also an artist. I've visited the colony for many years, benefiting from not only the beauty of the architecture, but also the inspiration that comes from the incredible community of artists supporting each other. This is culturally and significantly a historic uh, an asset to our city. Please vote yes. Thank you. 
Yes, thank you for uh, receiving us. Uh, my name is Francesco Siqueiros. I've lived in downtown Los Angeles since 1984 and moved to the Santa Fe Colony in 1988. I'm an artist, printmaker, and run a fine art print shop for 30 years and have since uh, seen the transformation of downtown and in particular, the displacing, displacement of artists in the arts district. It is uh, imperative to keep the arts, the artists thriving in Los Angeles, a destination for many artists around the world. I urge you to vote yes in making the Santa Fe Art Colony a historic monument. This will keep a legacy of creative production in Los Angeles. Thank you. My name is Don Lewis. Uh, I've been an artist at the Santa Fe Art for 30 years, and uh, it's been a great environment to grow, and I've seen other artists grow there too. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, Stephen Luftman. Uh, the Santa Fe Art Colony is a great example of the power of adaptive reuse. They took old buildings, we put in, we had four forethought of putting in artists to revitalize a community, and I urge you to pass this through. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That concludes public comment for this item. Uh, I'll ask uh, Mr. Bernstein if you have any additional comments, uh, Just followed by discussion from members, if any. Certainly. Again, Ken Bernstein, City Planning Office of Historic Resources. Just for the record, the Cultural Heritage Commission's recommendations were that this met two of the findings uh, under the Cultural Heritage Ordinance. First, for its significance uh, in association with the development of manufacturing in Los Angeles in the early 20th century, and later, as the Santa Fe Art Colony is the first publicly subsidized artist housing in the city of Los Angeles. And secondly, as a uh, method of construction as a development type as a rare example of a remaining early 20th century daylight manufacturing plant. So that's two of the criteria. Thank you so much. Any discussion members? Uh, hearing none, I'll move that we concur with the Cultural Heritage Commission in determining that the project is exempt from CEQA and approve the inclusion of the CB Van Voorst Company Manufacturing Plant slash Santa Fe Art Colony located at 2345 through 2425 South Santa Fe Avenue in the list of historic cultural monuments. Seconded by Mr. Blumenfield. Without objection, that'll be the order. Can you confirm, Mr. Mejia, that that concludes our business for today? Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Yes, Councilman, and also, um, one clarification for item 12, Councilman, the continuance date is February 25th, 2020. So ordered. Uh, and that concludes the meeting, Councilman. Excellent. We're adjourned. Thank you all so much.